Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Autism Stories. I'm your host, Doug Bletcher, the founder of Autism Personal Coach. Autistic people are the true experts of the autistic experience, and Autism Stories is where we interview autistic people to learn from their stories, experiences, and get their advice. If you would like to be notified about each week's episode of Autism Stories, we suggest you subscribe on your favorite podcast listening platform. We would also appreciate it if you could give us a positive rating and review, as it will help others to learn about Autism Stories. Autistic people are everywhere, in every profession that you can think of, and their lived experience can be so crucial for us to learn about because it helps us to have an idea in our mind of what may be possible for ourselves or our loved ones. That's why I'm excited to talk with Anderson North today, an autistic pro wrestler, and learn how being autistic has impacted that experience. We hope you enjoy today's conversation. Anderson, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you for inviting me on. It's a pleasure. I wanted to start out and learn uh, where does your story in the autistic community begin? Well, it starts about 20 years ago. I was diagnosed at around 13, 14 years old. So right at the start when we start high school over here in the UK. Um, I was diagnosed at 13, 14 years old and for a long time I kind of tried to hide away from the fact because 20 years ago um, the studies into autism were still very much in their infancy but um, really came into embracing the fact that I'm autistic in my adult years probably towards my mid to late 20s. Yeah, about yeah, 13, 14 when I was diagnosed, it really started, started learning. Now... You are the first pro wrestler I've had the opportunity to interview here on Autism Stories. So I just wanted to get an idea of maybe what is is it about wrestling that you really gravitated to that made you, you know, say, I want to do this. With a lot of wrestling fans, I got into professional wrestling when I was really quite young. But my first like real experience of like, this is something I really want to pursue um, probably started into probably towards the late nineties. I was coming up to about ten years old, and over in the U- here in the UK, we only really had well, I only had we only had five channels in our house at the time, um, and there used to be a like a recap. Um, it happened like once a week for the major wrestling promotions at the time, WWF as it was called, and WCW. Um, and WCW had like a recap every Sunday afternoon where I could watch a good solid couple of hours of wrestling and I just I remember at that I became just so captivated. It was they were almost like real life superheroes to me, in the sense that they were like cause everyone knows I've like, got all these flashy moves and whatnot. So they were doing like these incredibly flashy, like flippy moves and feats of strength. So they were kind of like real life superheroes, as I've said. Being autistic, as I'm sure you're aware, I kind of hyper-focused on that and got really kind of obsessed. And then for, like, from that moment on, I just that's all I ever wanted to do with my life. You started training uh, later on in life to be a wrestler at uh, 31 years old. How did yeah, you... I was, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was uh, not far off turning 31 years old at the time, yeah. How did you go about deciding where to uh, get trained? Well, I first started looking up training facilities when I was about 16, which is when generally insurance costs allow you to do any of those kind of sorts of training. And the closest facilities at the time for me were like a good couple of hundred miles away. Um, so I live in the north of England, so and at the time the closest training facilities were about 230 miles south of me, and at the time I wasn't able to drive. So I kept my eye out for like quite a few years after that, and... I was scrolling through my suggested events on Facebook, of all things, and I noticed there was a show, a wrestling show coming up um, about 15 miles from where I live. Um, so I checked out the promotion. It turns out that they had a training school uh, facility uh, attached to them. It took me a couple of weeks to build up the courage to actually go down to my first session. And from that first session on, I was hooked. So it was really just... I don't know whether the stars aligned or it was some kind of, I just look, if I hadn't been scrolling through my Facebook and noticed the uh, event that was coming up near to me, 
I wouldn't have noticed the layout of training facility and I'm, I may not have been doing it. So so there are some good things about Facebook after all. Yes, it turns <laughs> out that there is a couple of good things about Facebook after all. <laughs> So I've heard some horror stories regarding wrestling training, and I've heard some positive experience as well, certainly. What was the experience like for you? Well, I quite liked the physical aspect of it because when I first, when I started getting into my teenage years, I started to explore like physical fitness and whatnot. I come from a martial arts um, and rugby background, so I've always always been quite an active person. And as I said, I watched wrestling when I was young, so I kind of wanted to look like the guys that were on the screen. So I think like the progression and the physical aspect of it is uh, positive for me because you make tangible progress. You know what you're capable of doing or you know how you got better or worse from week on, like week in, week out. Uh, So that is the positive aspects for the training for me. Negative aspects, as you can imagine, there's quite a lot of sensory issues that I have to accommodate for which can sometimes impede what I'm doing. Um, and sometimes the other thing is being autistic, I can I tend to learn differently from other people. So I would generally, when I go to a training class, I would go to one that's got smaller attendance so I can um, ask questions, maybe take a bit of time for me to make sense of something in my head. Okay, that's how those are the positives and negatives for that. You mentioned sensory issues. I would imagine there's a lot of sensory issues in wrestling, whether it's the noise of the crowd at an event, maybe having just to touch another human when you're when you're wrestling, the sweating. I'm wondering about the ring ropes maybe rubbing up against you. How did some of those things affect you? Yeah, the touching, like getting, as you can imagine, you have to get very up close and personal when you're wrestling. So the touching is like. I wouldn't necessarily say it's got any better or worse. It's just something I've learned to live with in terms of getting used to being in very close proximity with somebody else in that regard. The ring ropes, yeah, the ring ropes can weirdly vary in difficulty in terms of sensory issues. Because, like, if I'm if I was to wrestle on a wrestle early on in the night, like if I was one of the first matches, the ropes would be still quite fresh and not and a bit more forgiving. Whereas later on in the night, you've obviously had a lot of people running off on the ropes, so you can imagine they might be a bit sweaty. Um, the biggest sensory issue I've had to accommodate for personally is the lights um, at a wrestling show. Because it's a blinding feeling that you can almost literally feel behind your eyes, is the best way I can describe it. Kind of, You feel it just behind your corneas. So that's a struggle, because obviously I have to accommodate for the lights being right in my eyes and having that sensory issue, but obviously I need to be able to see what I'm doing at all times. So it is a struggle, but it's one that you can, I've personally been able to accommodate and learn to live with. You know, there's accommodations in in all aspects of life. I'm just wondering, like, is there any types of accommodations? Like, have you ever talked with, like, the promoters and talked about those things? Or those kind of, like, yeah, we can't adjust the lighting at all? I've been at a couple of shows where I've been able to maybe not necessarily adjust the intensity of the lighting, but maybe adjust the shade of the color of the lighting. Maybe take blue is quite a common color for wrestling lighting. So maybe ask for if we could maybe get a different shade of blue so it's not quite as intense on my eyes. Mm-hmm. It's one of the, it's, the lighting is one of the few things I'm able to find accommodations for. So, yeah, different shades help. Now, on social media, you are openly autistic. But I'm wondering whether other wrestlers that you get in the ring with know you are autistic, uh, other wrestlers in those locker rooms, and what feedback you've received from them. When I first started creating my social media, when I was starting to wrestle more regularly, I always wanted to make a point of being openly autistic because you hear a lot of openly autistic people in other fields, um, predominantly like the sciences, maybe mathematics, and that seems to be quite a um, common misconception as well with autistic people who are all mathematical savants and that kind of thing. Um, So I always wanted to make a point of being openly autistic because it's an unusual field for an autistic person to be in kind of wanted to make a point of well you don't have to be a mathematical genius to be a successful autistic person um feedback has been mostly positive 
there's you know, I know a few people kind of refer to me as somebody who like speaks on behalf of autistic people or maybe being a bit of a spokesperson. I'm nowhere near like famous enough for me to consider myself that, but I appreciate the sentiment. So it has been mostly positive that I can people kind of see it as a positive step for what autistic people can do and how we're viewed. I have had a couple of others saying that I shouldn't be so open about it because I think I'm trying to take advantage of the fact. Whereas I'm not, uh, it's just, as I said, I want to maybe show that you don't have to be into sciences or mathematics or you don't have to be a typical autistic person to maybe have a good life or do what you enjoy doing. You mentioned a little bit earlier about a little bit of a background in MMA. What's your background in MMA look like in mixed martial uh, arts? Well, my, well, so my, my background is predominantly karate and judo. It was something I got into as a young child and it was something I kind of, I liked the very, it, I liked the structured part of the training. Um, it helped me give like a good bit of structure and routine to my life, which is, as I'm sure you're aware, quite prevalent amongst autistic people. From where on, I just found other people that enjoyed doing martial arts, maybe trained in different styles. So I could maybe do training sessions with them or I could maybe have a little bit of a sparring match with them and that helped me learn other things too. It's not something I ever wanted to get into competitively, but I was able to find other people I could do it with. You know, an important part of wrestling, um, I think, is telling stories and stories, you know, oftentimes are told with like each different wrestler's character or persona. So how did you decide what your character or style would be? Well, in terms of style, I'll start with style because in terms of style, I struggled for a while to find how I would wrestle. I'm a shorter guy and very much on the small end of the wrestling spectrum at five foot six and I weigh about 180 pounds. So I'm very much on the small end of the spectrum. And guys, uh, well, wrestlers my size tend to do a lot flashier wrestling that involves a lot of flips and top rope moves. And I tried that for a while. But my fine motor skills, which to uh, with the other to autistic people I've talked to, my fine motor skills are very typically autistic. And they're not great. I have a tendency to be a bit clumsy too. I forget how big my own feet are. So I tend to strip up quite a lot. So I, after a while, I was watching a couple of matches from more like Japanese promotions, and theirs were quite more legitimate matches, like theatric but legitimate in the terms that we do incorporate a lot more MMA kind of style stuff. And something clicked in my head where I just went, hold on a minute, I have a background in martial arts. Why don't I just incorporate that into my wrestling? So that's where my, like my wrestling style came from. A lot of strikes and submission kind of stuff. In terms of my persona, I'm quite typical in the sense of I'm quite an introverted person. So I'm quite quiet and I don't speak a lot. I realise I'm rambling on now, but I'm getting to talk about wrestling. So um, I'm quite quiet and introverted and I tend to keep myself to myself and I don't talk much because I'm quite shy, believe it or not. So... My character, I kind of incorporated a more, where everyone else was being very flashy and loud, I decided to dial the volume right down and I would use less words in place of people using more and I would speak more softly when people were being louder and I would incorporate that into, I'm evolving my character in the sense of becoming more of a, um, like a silent assassin kind of character in that I'm very quiet and everything's very methodical and I will plan everything out and make it very deliberate. So my character very much mimics my wrestling style. Now something that's difficult for me to do or something really difficult for me to do, I'm slowly getting better at it but it's definitely a work in progress, is marketing myself and telling other people about, you know, the great things about myself or my business autism personal coach. So I bring this up because I'm wondering how marketing um, yourself works for you within the wrestling industry in order to get yourself booked to wrestle on shows for different promotions or different companies. What's been that process of, of self-advocacy like for you? I would say that's probably one of the single hardest things because as I'm sure you're aware yourself, 
everybody who wants to do anything with anything is on some kind of social media, so it's kind of hard to set yourself apart social media-wise. I always try to include, it's a little touch, but I always try to include like some kind of autistic hashtag because I only know of one other openly autistic wrestler, and as far as I know, he's not on social media. So I always try to incorporate an autism hashtag. I maybe I just try to do little things with the, like the social medias I've got to set myself aside and market myself that way. Maybe try to post pictures of me lifting really heavy weights while I'm in the gym because I'm quite a small guy, so I think that might show that I'm some sort of impressiveness. Look. Otherwise, pre-pandemic, I was getting to a point where I was looking at getting booked on a few other promotions and one of the ways I was trying to do that was not necessarily sending tapes or anything I was trying to go out and help out at the promotions like tidy up put chairs out maybe help set up the ring um because I'm one of those that I don't I'm not necessarily as confident in my physical skills as everybody else boss I am boss I can do it I may not be as confident as everyone else so I kind of want to be more helpful I'm not going to just turn up, wrestle and then leave. I'm actually going to help out in ways that maybe other people can't or maybe don't necessarily have the time for. So I think that's how I set myself. I know it's not traditionally marketing-wise, but it gets me in direct contact with a promoter or people who wrestle on a promotion. Gets you in the door and they get to see your face. Yeah, that's it. That's my logic to that. In terms of wrestling, what are you, like what are your future goals? Well, as we discussed earlier, um, I came to being a wrestler quite late on in my life because a lot of professional wrestlers are either at the peak of their career or winding down the career at my age. So I started training at 31 and I'm, 30, I'm 34 and soon. So my goals really are just because I've got high impact sports and I'm now doing like a high impact sport slash form of entertainment is just wrestle as much as possible in as many places as possible while I'm still physically capable of doing so. As a side note of that, I would like it to turn into some kind of advocacy for other autistic people to maybe chase goals and whatnot that they may not have considered otherwise. So that's it. Do as much as I can, as widely as and as far flung as I can, and maybe advocate a bit along the way, if possible. And beyond this interview, how can our listeners learn uh, more about you? Um, well, I'm on all the major social medias. I'm searchable on Facebook as Anderson North Dash Wrestler. You can find me on Instagram at Anderson North underscore Graps. Um, I'm also on Twitter at Anderson North 87. And I do have a Gmail account, and that's Anderson North um, underscore Graps at Gmail. Otherwise, people can, if they want to learn more about me or maybe how I deal with being autistic trying my hand at wrestling but can always send me a direct message on any of those social medias too well anderson i really appreciate the conversation thanks so much for making time for me today thank you so much for inviting me. this is now the fifth podcast across three different podcasts that i've done so really glad to be doing it thanks so much to anderson for the conversation to learn more about Anderson, check out the link in the podcast description of this episode. With Autism Personal Coach, we coach people to find employment or to get involved in things that bring joy and meaning to their lives, just like Anderson. If that's something that would be of interest to you, then book a call with me today. A link to book the call can be found in the podcast description for this episode as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Autism Stories, and if you did, if you could tell a friend, foe, or anyone you know about it, so they can have the same enjoyable experience as you when listening to Autism Stories, it would be very much appreciated. On next week's episode of Autism Stories, we will be talking about fatherhood and one of my favorite topics, running. Until next time, I'm Doug Bletcher of Autism Personal Coach. Talk to you then.